This is Master Chief, the hero of the Halo games, and he first appeared in the first Halo game, because Master Chief knows how to conduct himself. If only we could say the same for all of gaming's famous characters, but sadly it's not the case. Because all too many of gaming's most recognisable and beloved characters actually made their debut way before the games they're famous for, in truly bizarre first appearances that will leave you saying things like, huh? And I guess Sonic is canonically an air freshener then? Weird. Huh. Well, uh, enjoy this video and beware spoilers for the following games. If you've heard of Conker, you'll most likely recognise him as the sweary squirrel who likes to get a bit squiffy. Charming. Conker's bad fur day might have made him famous, or rather infamous, within gaming circles in 2001, but this was far from Conker's first appearance in a video game. Instead, that honour goes to Diddy Kong Racing, the adorable 1996 kart racer full of cute, fuzzy-wuzzy animal characters like Timber the Tiger or Pipsy the Mouse, all friends of the titular Donkey Kong, and hey, wait a second, is that Banjo from 1997 game Banjo-Kazooie? You better hope Kazooie doesn't find out about this Banjo or else she's gonna be pissed. Indeed, this game by developer Rare had some real stars hidden in it, and some supporting characters from those titles too. Hey, Tippy, don't hurt yourself while driving because you've got a choir to conduct after this. But between Diddy Kong Racing and Conker's Bad Fur Day's release, the Conker development team went to E3 and saw that nothing really separated their game from the dozens of other upcoming cute platforming titles that were on show. So they took the cute fluff ball first introduced in a children's kart racer and decided to retool Conker's kid-friendly adventure game into an adult one, full of innuendos and out your endos. I am the great mighty poo and I'm going to throw my sh at you. Yep, that was a poo joke. Please like and subscribe. Conker did manage to get a family-friendly outing of his own just before this in 1999, with Conker's pocket tails for the Game Boy Color, but no one remembers that either because this stuff sort of overwrites it in your brain. I think I've had too much! <laughs> Don't let Rare anywhere near Timber the Tiger. You are to target the two nests occupying the Kitasaki Junction. The targets in question are a rank 27 reverse legged next called No Count and a four legged type. Identity unknown. Fans of From Software's difficult action RPGs clearly like being punished. Because I mean, just look at this. But if that wasn't enough proof, consider that one of the most beloved characters in this series is Patches, a recurring cowardly ne'er-do-well trickster whose most famous trait is surrendering once his schemes are exposed. Schemes that usually involve kicking you off things like he's doing here in the 2020 remaster of 2009's Demon's Souls. <laughs> Then I'll sell every last trinket of your corpse. <laughs> Incredibly, however, Demon Souls wasn't the first appearance of Patches. Instead, this creepy fan favourite actually debuted in another From Software series, Armored Core. There's a character called Patch in the Master of Arena game for the PlayStation, but the character would be first properly fleshed out in 2008's Armored Core 4 Answer, where Patches appears as the pilot of a mech suit. Is this right? It is! For Answer features an enemy known as Patch the Good Luck, a wily mech pilot described as an independent mercenary who prefers to snipe from the air while his foes are off guard. Classic. The origins of the famous Patches are on clear display here, as Patch the Good Luck does give up halfway through the fight against him. The links between this sci-fi fighter and his more medieval later appearances go even deeper, however. 
as well as some dialogue quirks in common, especially in the Japanese versions of the games, consider items Patches holds like the horse hoof ring, a symbol of his fondness for kicking, but also, it seems, a nod to his mech's distinctive reverse jointed legs. Give him that in the Elden Ring DLC from software. Might spice things up a bit. Don't underestimate the power of the Force. What are you doing? Battle one, fight! Star Wars The Force Unleashed introduced Galen Marek, aka Starkiller, an anti-hero strong with the Force. Except it didn't! Have you not been paying attention? Sure, The Force Unleashed may be Galen Marek's first adventure as the main protagonist, after you've spent 10 minutes being Darth Vader, spinning Wookiees that is. But this game wasn't the first time you got to play as him. In fact, his first appearance wasn't in any kind of Star Wars title. In July 2008, months prior to the release of The Force Unleashed, Starkiller could be found as a playable fighter in Soul Calibur 4, alongside Darth Vader on PS3 and Yoda on Xbox. This once in a series crossover with Star Wars allowed you to have Starkiller, here referred to only as The Apprentice, face up against Soul Calibur's roster of big lizard men and people with regular metal weapons. Are those things made of Beskar steel? Because otherwise you're sending them out there to be slaughtered, Soul Calibur. Starkiller even came complete with his own story mode, which upon finishing it, rewarded you with a cutscene of Starkiller getting force choked by Darth Vader, before them both squaring up for a duel. A story for another day. Right, in other words, you'd better cough up 40 quid come September if you want to find out what happens to these two. Radmobile. Can we all just take a minute to agree that Sonic the Hedgehog, for all his many qualities, would not smell good? One could point to his all chili dog diet, or the fact that he's constantly running full pelt, or most damningly to the fact that he's worn the same pair of trainers for over 30 years without ever taking them off. So while I don't think we know what Sonic's feet look like, and no, I will not be googling to check, we do know that they probably smell pretty rough. You'd be surprised then to learn that Sonic appeared as an air freshener in the Sega arcade game Radmobile, swinging around from your rearview mirror in a vaguely physics-y way as you tear across the United States, presumably dispersing the sweet scent of chili dogs across your virtual dashboard. Much more surprising, however, is that this is actually Sonic's first appearance in a video game ever. Radmobile came out almost a year before Sonic the Hedgehog made history on the Sega Genesis in 1991. So why was Sonic's debut as a dashboard ornament? To drum up enthusiasm for his upcoming proper game, it seems. Although how effective this bizarre cameo was at building hype for the character, I'm not sure, seeing as how air freshen Sonic doesn't do or say anything. I guess he is going fast? Technically? Many nerds like to tout their video game knowledge with this interesting fact. Did you know that Mario's first appearance was in a Donkey Kong game? Hmm. Created by Shigeru Miyamoto after he couldn't get the rights to Popeye, this mustachioed hero was originally called Jumpman, and rather than climbing down pipes and jumping on Goombas, Jumpman spent a lot of time climbing up ladders and jumping over barrels thrown at him by a big gorilla. He proved to be such a hit that Nintendo then put him in his own arcade game with his newly invented brother, and thus Luigi made his first ever public appearance in a video game. Or so you might think, but you'd be wrong. And in this, the 40th year of Luigi. For shame. On the 14th of March 1983, approximately three months before their arrival on arcade machines, the Mario Bros arrived on the Game & Watch. Yeah, that's right, Luigi made his debut on the Game & Watch game titled Mario Brothers, a handheld title that's been all but forgotten today. Which is why you probably didn't know about it, but we did, because we're Luigi experts. It's Luigi? Louis, Luigi, that's what I said, Luigi. L Luigi. I'm moving on. 
In this game, each Mario brother featured on one side of the Game & Watch, and there were some key differences compared to the brothers' later arcade appearances. First of all, their design in-game was less Mario Brothers and more Mr. Game & Watch, but there's two of them and they're wearing hats. Luigi wasn't even in green. Also, instead of being plumbers, these two worked in a bottling plant, and you controlled both brothers at the same time, zigzagging boxes of bottles up a bunch of conveyor belts and onto a truck. It's a cute piece of history, but not exactly the prime platforming gameplay we're used to and that they're famous for today. Well, Mario is famous for platforming. Luigi's famous for killing bunnies with ruthless efficiency. Go on. Go on. Yes! 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 That's what you get, Luigi. So you get for popping out of cover. It's and Luigi! Second one. Sniping! Luigi. Sniping oh from the sky! Oh my god. So many confirmed kills for the ill man. Totally unrelated to that, here's another video. I don't know what that card's gonna point to. Could be anything. So you killed the chief, you bastard! Liquid? No, you're not. Don't move! Is this the first time you ever pointed a gun at a person? Your hands are shaking. <sighs> Can you shoot me, rookie? Metal Gear is a series full of iconic and memorable characters, some of whom don't even turn out to be clones of each other. One character in particular who makes a strong impression is Meryl Silverberg, who many millions of PlayStation owners will remember as the highly trained soldier whom Solid Snake fights alongside in 1998's Metal Gear Solid. Seeing other people die makes you feel alive, huh? You love war and don't want it to stop? Is it the same with all great soldiers throughout history? As Meryl is introduced here and then goes on to feature in the Metal Gear games on subsequent occasions, you'd be forgiven for thinking this blocky depiction was her official video game debut. If we can't find them, we'll have no choice but to destroy Metal Gear. But only if you haven't played Hideo Kojima's Police Noughts, which to be fair you might not have seeing as it was first released in 1994 on Japanese home computers and has never been published in the West outside of a fan translation. The game is about a detective investigating the murder of his ex-wife, but more importantly, and more surprisingly, Meryl is there. Police Nort's Meryl is a futuristic, knife-wielding cop who looks almost identical to her Metal Gear counterpart, and is introduced with a background that will instantly ring bells for those up on their Metal Gear lore, such as a history with Foxhound and a role in the fall of Zanzibar Land. She even shares a Japanese voice actor with Metal Gear Meryl and has a fake Foxhound tattoo in both games. It's a paint tattoo. It's not real. The story here is that Hideo Kojima liked the character of Meryl so much, he lifted her wholesale from Police Noughts and put her in Metal Gear. Which means this early appearance, while basically identical, isn't really canon, seeing as Police Noughts is set in the year 2040 and Metal Gear Solid takes place in 2005. <laughs> Still, there's no harm in imagining perhaps Meryl ends up as a hard-boiled sci-fi detective many years in the future, right? Who knows, it might be preferable to the end of her Metal Gear storyline, which is, let's see... Married to Johnny, the comedy soldier who has diarrhea the whole time. Finally... Johnny... Headcanon it is, then. Super Smash Bros. is a series with a simple but great premise. Get a bunch of beloved Nintendo characters and have them punch the living daylights out of each other. Also, someone from Fire Emblem is there. Okay, we kid, we kid. Despite the series not being released outside of Japan, Fire Emblem staple Marth joined Super Smash Bros. Melee thanks to a huge number of fans demanding to know why their blue-haired Nintendo fave was snubbed from the original roster. And, like some kind of sweet cherry on top, he was joined by another favourite of the series, Roy. Roy! Except Roy wasn't a series favourite. And no, this isn't about some heated argument within the fandom, Roy wasn't even in Fire Emblem yet. 
Roy didn't actually make his Fire Emblem debut until Fire Emblem Binding Blade, which came out in Japan on the 29th of March 2002, four months after Super Smash Bros. Melee was released on the 21st of November 2001. <laughs> So while many Smash Bros. players outside of Japan assumed, and may still assume, that Roy was added to the series because he was already a big deal in Japan, in actual fact his first outing was being shoved in Melee as a way to market the new Fire Emblem game. <laughs> Nobody tell the Waluigi fans, or they'll be real mad. What? Are you kidding me? Oh no. <laughs> So those were some of the famous video game characters that didn't make their first appearance in their own games, but in some other random game. And now, hey, they're, they're, they've got their own series. They're in their own thing. That's cool, right? Can you think of any? Let us know in the comments down below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. We've also got a Patreon where you can become an OX Club supporter um, and link will be on screen. And if you want some more fantastic videos to watch, we've got some right here. But in the meantime, we shall see you next time. Have a lovely day. Bye.